We are really excited today because we have Katie Crutchfield in the studio, who, of course, performs as Waxahachie. And not only do we have you in the studio, but we have you in the studio on the very first day that music's coming out from your new album. Yes, it's a big day. Congratulations. It's really, I was telling our, our audience here how great this album is. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, so I think everybody, just get the get this one out of the way. Uh, everybody always wants to know about Waxahachie and where that comes from. Yeah. But it, it's home. It is. Yeah, it's uh, it's the creek behind my childhood home that I I'd sort of served as the setting for all of my songs from the very beginning. It's sort of like the one common thread throughout all my music. So it serves as the perfect name. You know, it's so funny that you, you take it back to the songs because this new record is so much about you and where you are in the moment, as we would expect. But geographically, it's about where you are physically as well. There's a lot of sense of place, different places around the country. Yeah, I mean, my biggest, you know, inspiration for this record have been people who really do rely on the setting, like people like Lucinda Williams and kind of like the classic sort of country Americana songwriters. So I really felt empowered to to I I always sort of lean on place, but I really felt like it was um, correct for this record. You know, your very first Waxahachie record was made in a week at your parents' house. Yes. And this one, uh, I'm assuming, was a little bit different. Brad Cook, who has worked with Bonnie Vare in the past, yeah, uh, was your producer. So, what was the recording process like for this one? It was, yeah, basically the complete opposite of the first one. Uh, I really took my time uh, more than I ever have. Um, I really, you know, uh, got into the songs and sort of, uh, you know, bounced things off of, of a lot of different collaborators and, you know, the biggest one being Brad. Um, he was sort of, you know, attached to, to the record from day one. And, um, yeah, we demoed for like six to eight months and then we we made the record at sonic ranch and in, in texas and um yeah just like really got into the songs and took our time and um it was yeah a little bit of a more thoughtful process <laughs> so when you were young you were all about sort of you know the the punk world and you've never been afraid of loud guitars but this is you know, this is more of a, a nuanced album. Yeah, I think, um, you know, after Out in the Storm felt like sort of like the, um, just a good climax for that era of my music to just be as loud as, and, and loud and angry as possible. And um, after touring that for a couple years, I felt really ready to, uh, you know, scale it back um, and, and focus more on my voice. Um, and so, so, kind of quietening the guitars a bit felt like the right move. Well, and it's also, you know, you're a new you. You're not the same person you were when you made that record, right? It's true, yeah. Well, we would love to hear a song if we could. Uh, yeah, it, I'm going to do a song called Can't Do Much. My mind hurts 
guess it don't matter why Hachi in our studios today here at the bridge. The new album is called Saint Cloud. It is out March 27th, and that'll be the next chance you have to hear that song. <laughs> That's a, it's such a good one. I really like that one a lot. I think it was about that time uh, when I was listening to the records that I realized, oh wait, this is a headphones record. <laughs> I'm so flattered by that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool. It's, it's really great. So you know, we always do uh, seemingly the origin story, and your mom has a lot to do with it. Uh, she got you into loving musical theater. Yeah, yeah. Both my parents. They. It's. It's funny. This. This record feels like it's um, truly like a return to form in a lot of ways. And I grew up on um, just classic country music and sort of like the powerhouse women of country like Dolly Parton and people like that. So I feel like um, it, I really leaned on uh, both my parents for this one. But yeah, my mom is such a music lover and uh, yeah, all of her like fervent love of music really uh, translated to all of us. Yeah. And, and, you know, her, um, and, and their love of, you know, the things that they introduced you to back then have translated into your favorites of your own, like Lucinda Williams and Nico Case. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Like definitely, I, I, my parents, like their, uh, their sort of country leanings definitely led me to people like Lucinda and Nico and yeah, for sure. So you have a twin sister, Allison, who makes some pretty great music of her own. Yes, indeed. And uh, and you all, uh, you know, I've tried to sort of picture this and imagine this, but y- you all picked up instruments, you know, when you were 14. Um, and you all were writing and practicing and playing every day. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was, it's funny, it's such a romantic story. At the time, it didn't really feel that way, but, um, you know, we, we, when we were about 13, 14, 15, um, we really kind of were nerds. Like, we didn't really have that many friends except for each other, um, and it's really because we liked the nerdiest stuff, um, and we were really into bands, like, that no one else that we knew were into, and, um, it, it ended up paying off pretty big because I feel like we, we spent all of that time that, um, you know, I guess people were doing 
pretty normal extracurricular activities, just like in our parents' basement, banging around on drums and guitars and covering REM and, you know, just like, um, you know, just kind of like in our own little world. So It felt like it was a channel for teenage angst. Oh, yeah, totally. I, I yeah, I'm lousy with teenage angst still in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, your first gig at the age of 15? Yeah. What was that like? It was cool. I wish I remembered it better, honestly. Um, but it was exciting. I remember the reaction being pretty validating. And, um, you know, it was one of those shows that everyone in the audience really responded. And, um, yeah, I'm grateful. It was at a, an all-ages sort of DIY club. So we were really playing to people our own age and who really kind of got what we were doing. I think you have expressed surprise that there was a punk scene in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, especially in the early aughts, there were punk scenes in every city in, in America, I think, you know. Um, so, but it, yeah, it is funny. I think it's really funny to people on the outside. I think that they have like an idea of what Alabama's like and punk rock doesn't really um, come into play. But yeah, there was a scene. There still is a scene. So it was not a scene that was filled with feminist allies. Yeah, not so much, no. <laughs> um, and, you know, we kind of, Allison, when I say, anytime I say we, I'm usually talking about me and Allison. I'm a twin, and that's just how we live our lives. But, um, yeah, we really uh, came into our politics and our feminism kind of um, in our late teens. And I think that people kind of slowly figured out the right way to be um, there, but not at first. And it was kind of, uh, it was, yeah, a struggle a little bit for us. But that probably was, and I'm not trying to in any way, shape or form, you know, say that that experience was okay. Yeah. But it, it gave you a spine early on, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think it was such a good experience, like such a good learning experience. It made us both tough and outspoken. And, um, you know, that's sometimes you need to struggle just a little bit to kind of understand you know, where you stand in the world, so. Katie Crutchfield is our guest. She uh, performs as Waxahachie. The new album is St. Cloud. It is at March 27th on Merge. And uh, we'd love to have another song if we could. Places been tainted, I put on a 
give me something It ain't enough It ain't enough I take it for granted If I could love you unconditionally I could iron out the edges of the darkest sky For some of us It ain't enough. Waxahachie in the Bridge Studios. That one is called Fire. It's on the new album St. Cloud that's coming out this March and that's a song that was released to the public today it's yeah. a it's a great one you know you. the um uh, you know I want to talk a little bit about your songwriting um but the songwriting for that one was a little bit different you kind of wrote that while you were crossing a bridge yeah <laughs> um yeah I wrote it on the drive with my boyfriend Kevin and uh we were just kind of driving um, from my hometown of Birmingham uh, to here, Kansas City. And um, Memphis is kind of right in the middle of that drive. And as we were crossing that bridge, this melody kind of just hit me. Um, I was actually driving, and he was sitting in the passenger seat. And so we were both very quiet for a long time. And the whole time, I, I was sort of putting the song together. And I later found out that he was also kind of putting his own song together. We were sort of like in this, <laughs> this crazy portal of like songwriting magic. Um, but... Yeah, it's the first time in my life I've ever written a song without an instrument in front of me or without a notebook at least. Um, just totally put it together in my head. Um, and it stayed exactly the same, which is pretty cool. So my understanding was, you know, the, there's a reference to Memphis being on fire. Yeah. And it was the sunlight off the water casting the light onto downtown. Yeah. Well, I was coming from downtown headed towards West Memphis and um, the the sun was so bright on the, on the water that it made it kind of glow. And so that was where that lyric comes from. So the, you, you mentioned Kevin, Kevin Morby. Yeah. And so you grew up in Alabama, you moved to Philadelphia, you moved to New York, you moved back to Birmingham, and now to Kansas City. Yes, there's like some more in there, but that's the basic, (laughs) (laughs) that's the basic story. Um, Yeah, now I'm in KC. Welcome. Thank you, I love it here, I love being here. Yeah, we're really excited to have you. Although, you know, when musicians come to town and they live in Kansas City and spend 10 months on the road, you know, or whatever yeah. it is. I, I know you, your first uh, your first tour is going to take you out for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's time. It's time for me. I haven't done a lot of touring in the last year and a half, so I'm pretty ready. So uh, I mentioned songwriting, uh, and, and I'm assuming that, you know, you've written so much for so long, and maybe this has changed, but in the past, you've referred to it as collecting a little piece of music, collecting a little piece of lyric, and then sitting down and working at the puzzle. Yeah, that's still very much how it is. Um, I think, you know, getting the melodies and the, all the ideas for the melodies kind of down um, comes first. And then when you finally kind of have a have a moment to really focus, um, you can put together all of the pieces and kind of a song never really feels finished until all the lyrics are in place. So and that's the hardest part. So, so making the record has a lot of different parts. You've said that that's really the best of it for you. Is it the writing? Is it the in the studio part? The writing is sort of. I have a very deep love hate relationship with it. It's the when when the song is finished um, and you're happy about it. It's the best feeling. It's the best part of what I do. I think. Um, and then the actual process of like you know, bouncing off the walls, trying to get it written is maybe the worst part. So it's sort of like a double-edged sword. Well, people do love your songwriting. Um, You know, I was talking to you when you came in, you know, I was complimenting you on the record and also noting that you're on the record for not needing very much validation. But But in the past, you have, you have looked to your sister to validate the things that you've done. Has she heard the new record? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She came and visited me in the studio, and um, 
Yeah, we, that's honestly one of the most beautiful creative relationships of my whole life is with Allison. Um, and not even because we collaborate together and we make music together, but mostly because we kind of make music for each other, I feel like. And um, her approval and, uh, you know, her enthusiasm about what I'm working on is, you know, really all the validation I ever need. Um, so, and I, I feel like that feeling is pretty mutual. So it's been... Yeah, just the the great like creative love of my life. That is, that's just great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you hear so many times about siblings that just can't stand each other oh, after yeah. they make music for a while. Well, you should see us on the road together after a couple months. It gets pretty crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> so you, it's a nuanced. It's a, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh, congratulations again on St. Cloud uh, out March 27th. We'd love to hear another song if we could. Awesome. I wake up feeling nothing Camouflage the wavering sky I sit at my piano Wander the wild ribby In the lilacs drink the water in the lilacs day, in the lilacs drink the water, marking the slow, slow, slow pass of the time. I get so angry, baby, at something you might say. Seen a light about me, run my life today, run it like a silent movie. Run it like a violent song Run it like a voice compelling So right it can't be wrong If I'm a broken record Write it in the dust, babe I fill myself back up like I used to do And if my bones are made of delicate sugar I won't end up anywhere good without you from the new album, St. Cloud. That is a song that you will hear on the bridge when we are allowed <laughs> to play it. Uh, it's not out yet. This is the day that the music comes out. You've got to be so excited. I am, yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty surreal, but, um, but yeah, very exciting. Yeah, and the one, we do have one problem, and I always say the problems for the end <laughs> after we already have the good stuff in the can. Uh, but there's no Kansas City date. I know, I know. There, there will be. There 100% okay. will be. All right. Yeah. 
One of these days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is a strong commitment to non-committal. Yeah, that's how we do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, this has just been a complete joy, and I can't tell you how excited we are to have you as a part of our local music scene. That's just fabulous stuff that you're here. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Katie Crutchfield in the Bridge Studios performing as Wax, Waxahachie. The new album, St. Cloud, out March 27th on Mergen. We will be seeing her live sometime soon here in Kansas City. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.